So it's time to talk about some magical girl show made for adults. Yeah, it might sound as a strange concept and to be honest not sure that it was well executed either. I get the appeal though, combining cute lollies with death, depression, rape, abuse and violence sounds very intriguing to say at least. But of course such crazy topics smash all together, couldn't exactly fit properly in this anime. In my opinion this title biggest mistake was not embracing the madness and go all the way with the gore and explicit content. You see the show seems restrained from having the full shock value it could have potentially had. Not to say that some scenes aren't disturbing but instead of having a one of a kind experience, the whole anime comes across as a mediocre attempt to tell a horror magical girl story. <laughs> of course there are other elements that were poorly implemented. Let's start with the story to name a few. The anime starts with our main female character called Aya. Just as every morning she is contemplating to end her life and jump in front of a train. <sighs> Such a cheerful beginning to an anime about magical girls. But anyhow her suicide attempt fails and we later on discover the reason for her depression. Everything in her life sucks. She gets bullied at school, she sucks at learning, her parents don't really give a shit and the brother also beats her up as a hobby. I guess this makes me feel a little bit better about myself as my life doesn't suck that hard as hers. But her fortune is about to change as she gets introduced to the mysterious magical girl site. Using a quote from a Disney song, the site admin makes our protagonist a magical girl and even sends her a weapon. Not to say I don't sympathize with her suffering or that I side with her bullies but she's also partially responsible for her situation. She's the one that allows herself being thrown around and beaten up. Check this other lolly that's about her size from Vivid Strike and how she handles these type of situations. You don't mess with little girls, I can say that much. But let's say I is not willing to build muscle and brutally smash people's heads on the school wall. Guess what I'm saying and from personal experience is that if you act like a little bitch, you'll be treated like a little bitch and it gets even worse. Long story short, she uses her gun as a last resort to defend herself in doing so learns of its power. Those two assholes get what was coming for them and got teleported around the front of a running train. At this point you get the idea what kind of show this is. I decide to stick around out of morbid curiosity and boy things get even more weird later on. Just as I was about to get even more unfair treatment and pain, a new magical girl enters the scene. From this point she becomes her protector and mentor figure forging an alliance with her for better surviving odds for the calamity days to come. Fortunately she sticks around our timid high pitched brunette 24 7 giving her brother a hard time in trying to interact with her. Here's where the plot kinda kicks in. This Tempest thing is supposed to be an event in which a lot of magical girls die or something. It's basically just a plot thread to move the story forward and give our BFFs some obstacle to overcome. First they encounter the magical girl hunter, a chick that, well, hunts magical girls. She's also collecting the magical sticks for her arsenal. To put it simply, every chick gets an item that grants them a special signature move power. For example, Yatsumura can stop time. <laughs> And Aya can teleport to pretty much everywhere she wants. Only negative is that whenever they use these abilities, their lifespan shortens and blood starts pouring out of their body. Once they capture the magical girl hunter, and after some brutal interrogation, she gives them all the intel they needed to be able to make contact with other of their kin. 
Now we're going to introduce the best character this show has to offer. Mijinin, or however you pronounce it. She's an idol and enjoys great popularity between insecure 10 year old men. Ah, guess that's why I like her so much. That Lala song playing in the background is sinister, kind of like the one from Shiki. <sighs> But that one was even more disturbing. Anyhow, where was I? Oh yeah. Mijinin is the lead singer of a girl band that cosplays as pets. Besides being rich and famous, she's also a magical girl and eventually gets to meet our protagonist and befriends them. Two vital information are soon revealed. First being her magical stick power being her underwear. And we also find out that she has a personal vendetta against the magical girl hunter for murdering her best friend. Here's where her character really shines as she goes from careless cute lolly to psychopathic crazy face. <laughs> In a matter of seconds, it adds to her charm to see her fostering such split personalities. She is a very interesting character and it's entertaining to see her explode with madness right before everyone's eyes. Speaking of being crazy and having a vendetta, Miss Yatsumura seems to have a dark secret in her apartment. Thanks to an unexpected visit from Aya, it is revealed that she's been torturing the murder of her family for a substantial period of time. This is what I don't like about her. She couldn't be satisfied with having the murder behind bars, but she also had to destroy her own life by obsessing with hatred and revenge. Just like the third uninvited guest to the party. Remember the red-haired chick tormenting Aya at the very beginning? Well, apparently she was also poor and unfortunate, which qualifies her to become a magical girl. After a little skirmish between them, the building collapses and Aya and Yatsumura end up in a hospital. Apparently the blonde chick does not have much life left in her, she has the organs of an old woman and her lifespan gets shorter and shorter with each battle. As the story wasn't complicated enough, we are presented with even more magical girls that frankly sounds like they have superpowers. One thing to be noted though, one of these girls is actually a boy. Huh, I thought only females are selected by the site, but I guess his perfect girl look tricked even omnipotent entities. Otherwise a sorority been formed to deal with the fact that their community is systematically eliminated by the site admin. Before we proceed with life-threatening events, in the anime cliche fashion, it is extremely necessary to take a trip to the beach where we get to witness our girls in their swimsuits. I knew watching this anime would be worth it after all. These are not exactly the best waifus on the market, but I'm a simple guy and I will never refuse some tight female anime skin. I guess the point of all this is to form a stronger bond between our characters and to show their human side as their life aren't exactly threatened at this moment for a change. Hmm. I think it's funny though how Mijimin and the magical girl huntress are now playing with each other and act like old friends, arguing about trivial stuff and such, considering that just one or two episodes ago she was trying to torture her to death. <laughs> Let's talk more about Mijimin. Sadly, she is superficially dumb enough to fall in love with Aya's brother. At first, I thought that she was playing him to get more intel on her fellow girls. But no, she is that stupid and gets used instead by that evil son of a bitch. Sorry, Aya's mother. That guy is over the top maleficent. He thinks he's superior to everyone, hits little girls, and just treats other people like garbage. I hate that guy. Unfortunately, he also gets his hands on Mijimin's panties and uses their power for his Maleficent plans. I'm not gonna show the clip when he's wearing those pink bikini, 
because it's disturbing and I don't like staring at dick? But I can tell you, I never thought I would have to witness some guy wearing girly, revealing underwear, shoving his junk in the face of another, in a show called Magical Girl Sight. And for some reason these panties are so overpowered that he basically incapacitates all these girls making their shitty alliance kinda useless. They can't even defend a teenager boy wearing little girl underwear. What a joke. It is all up to Mijimin to snap out into her psycho mode and get rid of the bastard. Too bad she dies in the process and now we get rid of the worst story arc and character in the show. Now it is time to deal with the site admin and the incoming calamity called the Tempest. While all these battles are interesting and visually pleasing, if it's more like some tacked on epic conclusion of an anime, they should have been rather character driven than action packed in my opinion. It is cool to see all this power display but if I wanted exciting battles with swords, I would just rewatch Bleach. I was interested in the premise of the show and it was its weird and somewhat different characters that made me stay till the end. Anyhow our two BFFs managed to secure their safety for the moment and go back to sleeping together. Guess it all ends well? Except for her brother that's getting a magical stick up his ass. Okay okay okay. This time I show was an experience. Um, Considering all the shit they crammed together in 12 episodes, it's rather impressive and the weird execution of a rather family friendly genre makes this show stand out a little. For better or for worse, it's up to you to decide. I give it a 6.5 out of 10. Magical Girl Sight isn't necessarily a good anime, but it's not one of the worst either.